What's going on everybody? Hey, I just want to get another project video uploaded and this in this one it's another cutting board project and what I'm doing in this one is I'm recreating uh, a past 3D ingrain cutting board video that MTM Wood Russia had done on YouTube and uh, as I've said previously is he's one of the primary reasons I got into doing what I do because even though some of the projects I do recreate some of his not necessarily designs because they've been designs and 3D images that have been around since ages but the ways that he can bring those to life in a two-dimensional service such as wood and it's really all about the processes he's really the master of reverse engineering um, a design to be able to create it out of wood and uh, one of the things I recommend if anybody decides to try to recreate some of his uh, designs on his website, he does sell plans for all of his 3D cutting boards and I'll support him any way I can. So I purchase these and this is a design I've done before, but in a smaller uh, surface back when I had a 13 inch planer. Now I have a 20 inch planer, so I'm going to give the big one a go. And as with all of the previous projects, whether it's a recreation of somebody else's methods or not, I always learn something new. So if you ever decide to check him out, give some of his plans a, a try and you'd be surprised what you can learn. But without further ado, let's get to it. All right, for the first part of this project, uh, the hard maple and walnut are cut down into strips. Um, the pattern of the two panels that need to be made because there's two uh, one color negative of the other pat, uh, panel. So the actual pattern goes 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 17, 20, 24, 20, and it just goes back down from there to 3 millimeters. Uh, and then that pattern repeats. So the two panels will be made up, and that's what I'm doing right here is starting to cut all the strips. I cut every strip of both the hard maple and walnut uh, of a certain dimension at the same time just so I keep everything uniform because after this step I'll have to run everything through the drum sander to get everything down to the exact same thickness for all the strips. Uh, the measurements can be off a tiny little bit so what I typically try to do is get them down to within a tenth of a millimeter of the thickness of the strip that they need to be. Um, and I achieved that on the drum sander. Right now, how I rip all these strips, I usually add about one to one and a quarter millimeters on there so that when I run the plane them or run them through the drum sander, I can get them down to the exact thickness I desire. On the thinner strips, uh, on the table saws, on the shorter stuff, I'll do it on the bandsaw, but like right here, what I use is I use these push blocks that I make that I can actually cut through because the really thinner strips, as you start getting down into six, five, four, three millimeters, they tend to, if you don't have something constantly pushing them all the way through the blade and past it, they'll get stuck back there and then the blade will of course kind of gouge into them a little bit and we don't want that. This method allows to push all the way through with no blade marks. After all the pieces are or uh, rip down to the width that I need them. Then I spend a few hours here at the drum sander going through all the different sets of strips and getting them down, like I said before, to about a tenth of a millimeter to where they need to be. Once all the strips are either plain down or through the drum sander down to the exact thickness that I need them, then it's time to assemble up the two color negative panels. Uh, this step isn't quite as bad as the final step that you'll see here in a little bit as far as assembly goes, because there's, I believe it's 41 individual strips to each panel. And the issue you sometimes run into is open time on the type of glue you're using. For ingrain cutting boards, I use uh, Tybon 3, so it's a waterproof glue, and that's what a lot of people use. Um, 
but typically you need to have everything set and clamped up within about 15 minutes. Otherwise you're pretty much out of open time and then you're gonna have some real issues. So it's all about getting the glue applied evenly so that there's no uh, dry spots, more is better than less, and then getting everything in order. Alignment isn't a huge issue in this step, but making sure that you have a flat panel during the, the, the clamp up is um, really a concern because when you plane them down later, then any twist or bow in it will show in the finished product. What I like to use in this step is I run flat bars or actual square tubing across the boards, clamp them down to ensure the uh, panel stays relatively flat and uh, straight, so no, no kind of uh, curves or warping to the boards. It was a pretty hot day out, as you can see here. I was about dying by the time I got this board done up. This next stop, now that I got those two panels uh, glued up, what I'm doing is cutting down some paddock um, in African hardwood, because this is eventually going to be the border of the, the cutting board. So just ripping down the strips now to glue up a panel that I'll eventually be able to cut into strips when I do the other two panels. One of the things I forgot to keep in mind while doing this project is paddock is considerably harder than the other two woods I'm using, and uh, which caused some problems later on in the project, which I'll go over when we get to that point right there. But definitely something to note when uh, combining different types of woods to be aware of their hardness, how one will swell or shrink, and how brittle certain woods can become once they're up in the hardness range, such as Padoque. Now that all the panels are glued up, a uh, couple days I let them sit for a day or two just to make sure everything's nice and cured. Run them through the planer a few times to get them down nice and flat, no, no visible seams. And uh, that's really the key to be able to assemble them once these are cut into strips. All three of these panels now get cut into strips and I, I decided I think I was a hair over an inch and a half thickness, uh, the overall height of what I wanted these boards to be when they were done. So I went slightly over an inch and a half just to make sure, you know, once I had plenty of room to plane down and sand down once they were finally assembled to get me down to the inch and a half mark. Now that everything's cut down into the overall uh, height of the strips that I need, we're going to cut all of these pieces into the exact same thickness strips that we did before for the initial two panels. On here I'm cutting these on the bandsaw because the bandsaw blade is a lot thinner than the table saw, so it generates a lot less waste. Um, you'd be surprised cutting 80 or 100 strips how much waste is generated on the 
the uh, table saw. Plus I can control thickness a lot easier on here and get them down to within about a millimeter of what I want for thickness and then they'll be drum sanded later to get them down to their final thickness. It's a little tedious but it pays off in the long run. Back to the drum sander for a few more hours of constantly feeding strips through. The important thing that I'm not sure if I mentioned it before during the first thing is every strip regardless of color, so whether it's a hard maple or the walnut or whatever, it's important that they're all done like thicknesses at the same time so that you ensure every thickness of the same measurement is exact. Um, any difference between same thicknesses across it will, will show. The most stressful part of this project by far is the near final assembly where all the strips come together. As you can see, what I, I try to set up stuff on here, my two pipes I lay across to assemble stuff and I lay out some plastic across my table saw because that's one of the longest work surfaces in my garage. And I try to lay them out in order because it's really easy to get things mixed up and then glue up as many as I possibly can at the same time and start stacking them there because you need a lot of time to start wor working the alignment to make sure everything lines up perfectly. Because patterns like this, it's incredibly important to make sure nothing drifts side to side and everything's aligned down the middle. Because you, any type of shifting in the pattern will um, break the three-dimensional pattern. So as you can see here, I got everything set up here and I'm going to use a square. What I do is before I start putting clamps on there, try to make sure that the pattern's not drifting left to right because over, uh, I think it's 40 something strips, it tends to do that, especially on these patterns. It's tough for your eye to catch it until it's too late. I usually add one clamp on here and start squeezing some of the glue out. And in doing so, typically with this many strips, the pattern's going to shift again. So then I'll release tension on there and then adjust once again until I'm satisfied that the pattern's staying straight. Then I start adding my other clamps. What I mentioned before about the differences in hardwoods here, the paddock borders, what I should have done on this is add a couple strips of pine on the ends to prevent the force of the clamps from digging too hard into that paddock. What, I, what you don't see on here is that those end strips actually cracked during the curing of the glue. So I ended up having to saw them completely off and then add new ones after the fact, after the main pattern was completely cured. So big mistake on my, my behalf. It's like I said, I learn different things every time I do one of these projects. Now in this final, now that I've sawed off those edges and got them nice and straight, I'm gonna add the final border strips and then the strips of pine on the outside. Uh, number one, to protect during clamp up so I don't crack those outer really hard pieces of paddock, but also during the next step, once these boards are ran through the planer, that it doesn't completely blow out those sides. So this is one of my favorite parts of the near finishing process, um, is because when you, know, you get all the glue, surface glue off, and you start seeing the pattern, how it turned out, the actual wood that's buried beneath and the pattern really starts to pop. The last cutting step is removing those pine strips from that were glued onto the sides so we have nice straight, straight edges. And then we move on to many hours of sanding and finishing right here. You know, I, this sander is a workhorse of, of my shop. This, uh, what I'm using is 80 grit sandpaper on here in a very aggressive mode. You can see it's not random orbit. It's actually spinning and vibrating. Um, any other type of edge or face grain wood, this would be just tearing it up like crazy, but you can see how just how durable the face of ingrain wood is. Straightening up the edges and smoothing them out on this big uh, edge sander here. Then on the other sander next to it, I don't show it in this video, I round over the edges a little bit just to prevent chipping on the corners. Usually I take a while and look at each board as they're nearing completion and decide which 
uh, surface is going to be face up, you know, typically just what, what has the best color and whatnot. And then I go ahead and pick the side and route the handholds on there. After that, I move on to 120 and then uh, 220 grit sandpaper and spend a couple more hours surface sanding these before I move on to the sides and breaking the corners on the edges to make sure it's a nice, smooth finish. And probably one of the best parts is after everything's said and done, um, they get soaked. I used to just rub them with mineral oil, but you can see I have this bin right here that I typically just set them in. However, these boards are very large and very heavy, so they don't quite fit in there. So I had to rotate them throughout to make sure that they get a nice soaking throughout in mineral oil. After that, I'll throw on, uh, I have a little crock pot heater that I heat up beeswax and mineral oil in and they get wiped down before I move on to the attaching the feet and the badge on the sides.